and its energumen opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. Energumen by a romping 10, 12 legs. So, hello and welcome back to the Road to Cheltenham Challenge, episode number 15, Golden Groom. This time, two it weeks' is. time, and Nergemin will be the Queen Mother Champion Chase winner. Please, God, with a help of luck, through him, with him, in him. Thoughts? What, well, thoughts on Nergemin? <laughs> thoughts on Cheltenham, two weeks away, Rona Groom. We are absolutely getting near the day. And uh, look, just I suppose before we kick off the show, we're going to do it a little bit differently this week um, than we, I suppose, than, than we typically do. Uh, first and foremost, huge thank you to everyone who has, uh, I suppose, got involved and helped us on our push for 2,000 subscribers, Mr. Groom. Um, we've had a big response um, and lots of comments down below, and we're going to be giving away um, some prizes later on, uh, thanks to the participation on last week's episode. Uh, and once again, you know, over 3,000 views. So the show's going well um, and, and has been. So thank you to everyone. And if you haven't hit the red button, that sounds like it's Rebecca trying to get in. If you haven't hit the red button, subscribe um, to the show. A um, couple left, obviously, uh, but two weeks to the festival. And uh, Rona Groom is getting very, very exciting. It is, yeah. It's, it's the stage now where the, the racing at the weekend is kind of uh, substandard fair because we're all waiting for Cheltenham. So I think that's the kind of the theme of the show we're going for tonight. We, we're going to get stuck into the handicaps and uh, kind of gloss over. Well, not gloss over, but there wasn't many Cheltenham clues at the weekend. So we're, it's 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 a case now where everyone's getting wrapped in cotton wool. Uh, I was down at Gordon's on Monday for a press morning there. I really enjoyed that. Uh, Gordon's in grey form. Really, really strong team. 55 horses he has going over this year. So he's going to be his biggest ever team. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's going in all guns blazing. So looking forward to seeing, it, seeing the Mead man go well at the festival. Yeah, no, wish Gordon the best. Uh, you mentioned team of the show. So the way we're going to do it this week is going to have a quick uh, recap of the weekend. Um, obviously, as you said, it's getting late in the day as regards Cheltenham, um, but there was a couple of runners maybe that that could come into come into the equation at Presbury in two weeks' time. Um, then we are going to look at the handicaps. So the handicap weights were out obviously um, since our last episode. We're going to look at that and give three three I suppose horses that we're keeping an eye on. Rona Groom might necessarily be a selection this week, uh, but our takeaways from. Um, the, the handicap weights, of course, um, this week. So we're going to give a selection each, go back and forth, to and fro, um, as regards that. Then we're going to pick a winner, of course, of um, the prize last week, which was the the Cheltenham, the Irish Field Cheltenham magazine, Ron and Groom. So courtesy of your good self. Um, so lots of engagement. We're going to pick a winner. Portfolio Spotlight, going to pick someone's portfolio, look at it, analyse it, critique it, and... Um, yeah, go, go through it. And we will look at our own because Ronald Grimm hates when we do this. He thinks everyone's sick of listening to our selections, but I think we it, it's been a bit of a gap, so we're going to look at our own um, selections. Okay. He doesn't want to do that, but um, I think we will do that on, on the show. Uh, and, and also then, of course, our selections this week. Um, so, yeah, that's the way we're going to structure it. So, Ronald Grimm, kick us off. Um, weekend recap. And... You fire away. What did you? What? What was over the last seven days? What was your takeaway uh, as regards Cheltenham and Furtherfield? Yeah, I suppose seven days. We we have a bit of leeway here because um, we we didn't get to talk about the the Navin meeting that was uh, postponed the previous weekend. Uh, top Beacon Edge was good there now. Um, interesting to see what he goes for. He beat Farouk, or he didn't beat him, but he finished second to Farouk to then, but probably merged the better horse in the race. He was giving him seven pounds. Heavy ground for Uchtal then would have suited him probably a bit more. And uh, I just wonder what they do with Beacon Edge now, whether they roll the dice with him. He had a tough race there, obviously uh, not ideal. Uh, so close to Cheltenham, but that's a pretty strong form line. A good run from him coming off a break. So interesting to see how, how he gets on um, or whether they do go to Cheltenham with him or maybe save him again for uh, go back to Ferry House for the, the two and a half mile, the, the Ryanair Gold Cup there. Uh, on Saturday, um, there was a, three grade twos at, um, at Kempton. Two of them now, uh, the horses that won them won't be going to Cheltenham. Uh, Pick Dorhey will be um, will be heading for Aintree, I'd imagine. 
Um, and the Dovecot winner, whose name escapes me at the moment, will, will likely not be troubling any Supreme market anyway. So uh, the the Adonis winner is probably the only significant win, Basil. And uh, it's my Knight Salute who's uh, who's got it done there. Look, I've said a couple of times now since I put him up, the Irish juveniles look head and shoulders above the Irish contingent at this point. I'd, my view kind of hasn't changed that, but he's a nice horse. He's a likable horse. He does it well. He's won five out of five now. Um, look, he's trained by a small name trainer. I'm not too familiar with him myself, Milton Harris, but he's doing a great job with him. Placed well. He's got a good attitude. I think he'll actually fare be- be- best of the British in the triumph. Um, but I wouldn't be expecting my 16 to 1 to, to oblige there, just the way the market's kind of worked out since that. But I thought he did it nicely uh, at Kempton and uh, it deserves to take his chance in the triumph, definitely. Yeah, I. As I said to you, um, I was raving about Porticello being the best of the British and giving you a bit of stick with Night Salute. Night Salute's actually beaten Porticello already this season and seems to be going in only one direction. Uh, and he's a horse that's grown on me. And, um, you know, he's, 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 he's done it nicely. The second horse, um, the name escapes me, also trained by the Moors. Is it Teddy Blue or Blue Teddy? That's it. Yeah. Um, he was running a massive race at a big old price. Uh, was he twenty to one uh, on the day? Was 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 looking like the winner coming to the last, and he made a hor- horrific mistake. Um, and he was probably the one to 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 take out of the race for me. Um, and I felt as though he was looking like he was going to maybe beat Knight Salute. So um, lightly raced uh, Teddy Blue. So he he would be one I suppose to take from that race. Um, just going back to to Michael Purcell at Turles uh, last Thursday. Um, we are obviously talking about the last seven days. The gaffer uh, was, he's a, he, I suppose, again, he was he shapes like a stare, a big raw horse. We had Jordan Gamford on the show um, actually after um, riding the gaffer to victory. And, you know, he really liked him. And maybe soft ground might be important to him. Um, obviously, the Martin Pipe, the Michael Purcell can be a good pointer for the Martin Pipe. Uh, Gordon will run plenty in there. So he's one, um, certainly, he, he looks like a horse maybe, almost for next year. Um, I like him a lot, the gaffer, and I wouldn't be surprised um, if he ran a big race in the Martin Pipe. The one also, you know, that ran on late in the race and maybe gone up and trip further, uh, Berkshire Royal. Um, you know, he, he was he, he stayed on quite well in the end. If you look back at the last, you know, 100 to 50 yards, he was staying almost the best, although the gaffer may have been um, idling in front. I was going to ask you, what about... Um... Over Fairy House. What about your Prairie Dancer? I saw you tweeting about that uh, in the I Care Allen race. Interested in him for the Boodles? Yeah, big time. Um, big time. I, this, this horse is, you know, I, I Carolyn, It was up there with the pace on. Prairie Dancer started off the race and he was he was he was ridden prominent. He jumps well and it was a very very strange sort of a race. He seemed to get outpaced. He got shuffled back the field. Um, and again, once again, JJ Slevin was tender hands. At the whole, we kind of let him fill up, and when he was the one coming home the strongest um, at the end, and it was an interesting, a very, very interesting run, I felt. Um, he stayed on very well. This horse clearly has a big engine running, and you know, we'll come on to the handicap weights later on, but this horse would have a, a lively each way squeak, I feel, in the boodles. Uh, that's Prairie Dancer uh, for Joseph O'Brien. And we must mention, uh, we must mention on, on, on Sunday, of course. At uh, at Nace, bring on the night was very very green, wasn't he? And still done it mightily impressively. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he was good. It's just it's just a case of probably a bit too late in the day to be um, coming out now, winning your maiden hurdle. And by all means, it sounds like they're they're thinking about having a go at Cheltenham, but it's just short on experience. I'd have to say, wouldn't he be? Um, just basic race course experience, but you'd have to be impressed with the way he did it. And I wonder would they be tempted to wait for Fairy House or uh, or Punches Town for that mind? But yeah, he looked green and still won won quite comfortably in the end. So yeah, he was good. And a couple of others earlier on that card were good. Very um, flame bearer, uh, like this horse for Pat Doyle. Um, He's I lovely nice Prairie thing. Dancer form. Yeah. And the horse that was second to meet in Greece, watch out for this horse now, up and trip on a bit of better ground. I think he'd be, he could possibly be a nice one for the, the long distance uh, novice handicap hurdle at, at Fairy House. Like these horses that won earlier on at uh, Nace, none of them are going to Cheltenham. Captain Guinness uh, won 
won okay against Black Bow, um, but he's not going to Cheltenham either. So, uh, but watch out for Flame Bear. He could be one for maybe Aintree, maybe Punchestown, and Meat and Grease. So I think he's a nice horse. You mentioned Aintree and um, a horse that we've been talking about on the podcast for quite a while. And never mentioned him, of course, last week, but Palace Rock. Uh, Ronan Groom mentioned for, for Francis Case. He already has a, a couple of horses in training. Um, he won the, the handicap hurdle on the card. Um, he was he was stepping back and trip um, Palace Rock. Uh, Francis said after the race, going right-handed um, seems to be, sorry, going left-handed seems to be the key to this horse. And you can only ride him one or two ways out the back or in front because he's quite, um, he doesn't settle well enough. Um, and he's surely going to go up um, you know, close enough to the mid mid one thirties, get a couple of pounds in the British handicapper. He's talking entry as a potential option for for Palace Rock. Uh, so a, br- a lot of British listeners might not be aware of Francis Casey. Um, he is uh, well able to train them. And Max Flamingo, we did mention him on the show earlier in this series. Uh, we did mention uh, Max Flamingo as a potential Irish national horse. He did confirm that that was the target. And so we got that right anyway, Ronald Groom on the series. Um, and he could be an interesting one, his former course at Fairy House. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, see how that kind of develops over the next couple of months. Yeah, but he's, uh, he's I think he's still at a decent price. I mean, he wants to get involved. Mm. 33 to 1, I think, I thought I saw. Now let's talk about handicaps. Uh, Rona Groom, handicap weights. Go on, take it away. Give us a horse that caught your that caught your eye, I suppose, since the weights have come out. Okay, so I kind of did that we pick out three ones that we, we from the handicap weights that we uh, really caught the eye. Instead of trying to dissect them all, I think you're you're out of hiding and not in trying to dissect all nine handicaps because it, it's an absolute mission in itself. For me, personally, punting on Cheltenham, I'd much rather to keep the handicaps until the day or the day, the night before or the week of whatever, when the, when the, when the declarations come in, have a good crack at it then. But looking at lists of like 90 horses, just not for me. You can obviously pick out individual horses that you're interested in. And one of them for me um, is Commodore uh, for Venetia Williams. Now, he's been entered up a couple of times in the last month or so. They looked at a race at Haydock. I think they're looking at the Grand National trial. He's in the Grand National but I'm not in the slightest surprise that they've kept the powder dry um, and possibly will go for the Kim Muir. I think he's in the ultimate as well, but they've kept him on a mark of 142. I think this horse needs to go well fresh. If you look at his last four, his last runs coming off a break, uh, like he won on the seasonal debut earlier in the season. I'll get to that form in a second. The season before, he, he was second to Snow Leopardess in a good handicap at Haydock. First time out, uh, a valuable handicap there. Uh, prior to that, he won off a 249 day break at the start of his 2018 season. I think he's a horse that needs to go fresh. If you go back to his form that he won, or he won by 15 lengths over the Kim Muir distance at Cheltenham at the December meet, beat Mr. Fogpatches there. That's decent form. Mr. Fogpatches is holding. <laughs> Mr. Fogpatch is holding his, holding his form in good Irish handicap chases since. Court Master was in third. He's won since. And Santini was in fourth. And he's uh, going to run in the Gold Cup after a couple of decent performances. The Commodore beat them all easily. He only went up nine pounds for that. And I think they've kept him on 142, kept him fresh. He's 20 to 1 for the Kim Muir. And that's already a bit of interest to me. So that's my first handicapper for uh, as the way it's come out. And the horse is called to come on Teddy um, for the Noel Feely um, racing syndicate and trained by Tom George uh, but very interesting finished fifth behind Laham Press and I think there's a, there's a couple in here that had handicaps in mind uh, the Glancing Queen fantastic as Oscar Elite uh, and, and back in fifth was come on Teddy I feel this horse um, three miles and extended I suppose three miles he was you know he was uh, third in the Pretemps last. Sorry, yeah, third in the Pretemps last year. Um, he's good festival form, and he's on the same mark um, over um, fences as he as he was over hurdles. This horse is a chaser. He's only an eight year old, um, and he would be a big player if he gets into the Ultima. Um, he's you know he's rated one hundred and thirty seven, so he would probably need a couple to maybe drop out. Um, and he's also into Kim Muir, so it'd be just interesting to see which race he goes for. Uh, but he's certainly a horse that. 
Um, I would be very interested in backing on the day. Um, that's come on Teddy uh, for Tom George and uh, the Noel Feely Racing Syndicate. Very good. Uh, Next up. I'll jump in now. <laughs> I was looking there to see what what sort of rating you'd have to be to get into the uh, the ultimate, just to check out. Uh, but I guess if he's one thirty seven, you could um, you could get in. You could you would have got into the ultimate last year off one thirty seven, so that might be the avenue that they go with him. Um, my my second one I'm going to put up now. I was down at Gordon's on Monday, um, and. Didn't get to ask him about... I'm always interested in Gordon's team for the handicaps. I think he puts a lot of work into it. He's obviously got a lot of a lot of uh, darts to fire. Um, and mm-hmm. he's always interested to see which way he's plotting or which way he's thinking. And uh, Sire de Burley, I'm very interested in again. He's one of the more obvious ones, but he's... Gordon was uh, just speaking glowingly about how he comes to life around this time of year, how he comes to life around Cheltenham. And I think they've just decided he's not going to win a stairs this season so they've basically decided that after his first run he finished second to Durasso. it was disappointing then at leopard sound at christmas and then they've just had a look at him at warwick to see if he get handicapped he's down to a mark of he's 155 in ireland he's only 156 in england after the weights have been published so that's only five pounds higher than his last win in the pretemps he's obviously won the race twice he was second in the stairs last season He's, his record on track is just is excellent. He was fourth in the Martin Pipe once as well. So I think with that course form, he's not a, an overly raised 10-year-old. Like he's he's only had 20, 21 starts. I think he's can definitely deliver off that mark of 155. And the, the clincher for me was Gordon told us that Rob James is going to ride him. Now, Rob James obviously rode a winner for Gordon two seasons ago, Milan native. And... Uh, Davy Boland will tell you, or anyone will tell you well, who knows the point-to-point scene, Rob James is is terrific value for £7. I think he has over 200 point-to-point winners ridden. He's starting to get rides and bumpers now. But for whatever reason, he, he didn't ride in bumpers initially, and he still has a £7 claim on the track. It's it's more or less a free £7 off the back. So that was the clincher for me with Sire de Burley. I think he has a rock, really rock-solid chance in the per attempts of making, another, making a hat-trick there. My second uh, handicap interest um, from the weights is trained by Willie Mullins. It's in the Martin Pipe. Um, we went in on Gallop and the Champs uh, last year. This horse has quite a similar profile. Five-year-old um, who has been given a mark of 142. The exact same mark as Gallop and the Champs last year. Similar to Gallop and the Champs, he only had three runs. And I think he's a lovely blend of speed and stamina. Um, the horse is adamantly chosen uh, for the Watch This Space syndicate. And you can watch this space because some of the horses in around them, Gringo de Brel is, is a horse like Ebisari. And he was beaten by both of those um, on his first two starts over Hurts. But going back to last year, I know you hate bumpers, but he beat a horse at Punchestown in a bumper last year called Springwell Bay, um, who has since went to John Joe Neal. And he was a horse that I had my eye on for the champion bumper, um, he was trained by Mags Mullins at the time, uh, but this this was this was a good performance that day. Springwell Bay is a horse that would have given a lively outside chance. I think he's a big engine. Um, he was a, a very impressive winner on the other side of the Irish Ocean uh, this season since he went to John Joe O'Neill. But as I said, two runs over over hurdles. Uh, Ebisari is a horse I like for the Boodles. Um, he was you know shouldering a lot of weight that day, um, and, and he's since come out and, and absolutely hacked up at Turles. Um, he seems to be ground versatile. He's a good, uh, I suppose, blend of speed and stamina. Um, and that's what I like for the Martin Pipe. I don't think, you know, the likes of the Goffer was another horse that interested me in the race. But um, I think he could be maybe a horse for next year. This horse I like. Um, and I think he, he's getting there slowly but surely. Um, and I just, I, I, he, he certainly interested me. Um, the Irish have won this seven times since the Martin Pipe has existed. That's uh, so a good record in the race. Um, and adamantly chosen is one I like a lot. He is entered into county hurdle, however, so look, take your chances. But I'd, I could see him lining up here uh, with a big chance. Very good. Uh, I'll finish off my last one uh, is Andy Dufresne, who Andy. I'm going to take you on. 
take you on, Basil, with uh, Buddy Rich and another Gordon Elliott inmate here and Andy Dufresne. Um, I am, it looks like he's been mapped out for this grand annual, possibly like Buddy Rich has as well, but Andy Dufresne hasn't run since he, st- he finished second to Captain Giddis um, in the, I think it's the Poplar Square chase in, ace in November. He was given seven pounds to Captain Guinness there, which is no a fair task. And considering the way Captain Guinness ran next time out in the Tingle Creek, it was a fair effort for Andy Dufresne just to finish four lengths behind him. Uh, since then, he hasn't run, obviously, but he's always been a horse with a tall reputation uh, when he was a novice hurdler. Never, it didn't happen for him over fences last season when he went up to the top level. But he's lightly raced. He got a mark of 154, I think. Um, he's 152 in Ireland, so not a huge, not a huge hype up there. I think he could be a real. Um, he could be one that just, just, just proves much better than that sort of mark in a, in a, in a grand annual. I think he's he'll eventually be a horse that's caught between two two. It's not good enough for grade one level, but I think he could on a on a, on a one off day, and it seems like that's what they've aimed with him for. Um, he could take advantage of a mark of 150 54 in a grand annual. Um, and he's a horse that goes well fresh as well. He's got loads of runs first time out, so I just think he's been laid out. I just think he can get 14 to 1 for the for the race, and I think that makes a lot of appeal already. Mm, interesting. Um, well, look, at, look, I, I'll throw a couple into the mix, obviously. Um, that we, we, we've put up already. Um, obviously, you mentioned Buddy Rich, um, happy with that. Uh, Saint Seagal, um, obviously the Irish have a, a, a very good record in the the Boodles, but I mean one two six Ronan Groom, he's going to be right down the bottom of the weights, and you know look, given given his form, obviously behind Porticello, um, he's went out you know and 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 won uh, next time. Um, he's, he's a horse that you know I could see him up with the pace, um, ridden forward. He's the one for me. I think Saint Seagal. There's going to be a lot of chat. Obviously Gaelic Warrior. Uh, the tide turns who you've in the team sheet, but right down the bottom, <laughs> what will he be carrying? Um, <laughs> Chester Williams, I'll have to have a strong pair of hands, I reckon, to hold this thing. Um, you know, but I, I reckon he'd be ridden forward. Similar, we spoke about Palace Rock. I said there's two ways to ride this horse out the back in a boodles or, or, or up with the pace. And uh, since he gal is one, um, I'm quietly confident after seeing the weight. So, two English horses in a handicap run a group. Uh, and one Irish, so yeah, uh, Saint Seagal, Prairie Dancer would be the the one I would be keeping my eye on at maybe a slightly bigger price uh, for the Boodles. So yeah, we go for it. We go for it. Uh, that was the handicap weights, Ronnie Groom. Now you're going to give away some prizes. Talk to the listeners. Yeah, we said we'd give away a magazine to uh, everyone to put in their nap. Uh, so you'll have to take my word that I did a, a random draw here at home. And the name I picked out was Dan's Dollars. His best bet for Cheltenham is uh, Galvin for the Gold Cup. And I didn't just pick Dan out because I backed Galvin for the Gold Cup as well. You'll have to Corruption at his best. But Dan, in any case, made a good case for the Elliott runner there. He's already beat Pl- Aplutari, says, and the other market ride was not quite up to scratch uh, in the Irish Gold Cup. Great show, lads. Thanks, Dan. Send us your um, send us your address to, what's the email again? Barrychamp.gmail.com? Champ.ie at gmail.com. So um, did you ever get around to sending the post out to... Chris Hooten and Dermot O'Brien. Dermot O'Brien, of course, you I didn't did. let us know your address, Dermot. Let us know. Send us the email and we'll send you out a magazine. So, um, uh, There's definitely gone to Chris Hooten, but Chris, if, if you're watching this and you haven't received your magazine yet, I'm told uh, the uh, magazines getting over to Britain have been delayed quite a lot since we've started sending them over. Um, afraid we can't do anything about that, so I hope you, you do get it soon if you haven't got it already. Now, it's time for Portfolio Spotlight, Ronald Grimm. It's not ours. It's Mr. Ferdinand Moore. That's the, the portfolio that we have chosen uh, this What week. a name. Yeah, what a name. What a name is right. Um, basically, Ferdinand Moore, Kilcrut. He's gone for Kilcrut in the Supreme Novices Hurdle at 4-1. to one. Back in the back door there. You must have thought that was gone, Ferdinand. But, um, Ronan, 
Champagne fever comes to mind. Yeah, I I think he's he's alive with that uh, kill crush. Uh, he's not. He's obviously he's not going to be a four to one chance on the day, but he's he's alive now with 10, 11 to one. I've seen worse bets of that sort of, that sort of thing. And uh, obviously, he wouldn't be backing him at four to one, but he's live. He's live with that. Fast he's live. He's live. Fasile Vega was his week two at 20 to 1 for the champion bumper shirt. Sure. My God, what a bet. Fair play to you. Um, we three, Molly's Ollie, Ollie's wishes, Runagroom. I haven't been paying close attention to this one. Is, is it going to run even? She had a tough race to last, day, didn't she? Um, to be honest, I'm not completely sure if she does run or not, but uh, she's a nice mare. She did quite well earlier in the season. Uh, I'm not, yeah, not, I'm not. Totally sure she runs in the mayor's hurdle, to be honest. Okay, Blue Lord, 20 to 1 for the Arkel. He, he could be. He, after the Arkel is run, uh, I was going to say he could be clear. He could have cleared himself, but after after day one, he could have cleared himself. Uh, Blue Lord for the Arkel, great chance, uh, 12 to 1. That's a good, or sorry, 20 to 1. That's a, that's a great price, isn't it, to get? 20 to great, one, price. great price, great bet. Good, good thing to be sitting on, on day one. Album fall at 12 to 1. Negative vibes from the Willie Mullins stable tour. Um goes to the gold cup. It's sure it's wide open, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't like that at all by Willie now that we're just mentioning it. Like that was very negative now on Album and it doesn't sound promising at all to him with him, whether what they're gonna do with him or not. I, I, I've never heard a trainer kind of be so openly negative about a horse or well, a high profile horse than, than Willie was. So LA Bell. 10 to 1 for the mayor's uh, novice hurdle doesn't go to the race, but um, she's a nice mare, all, all, all the same. So I'm lucky with that one. Um, mm. Week seven, flooring porter. Uh, I can confirm I did speak to Danny Mullins last night. Um, he is a special guest on our uh, preview night, Cheltenham preview night tomorrow, that we will be recording our Cheltenham preview night. Um, and Danny uh, sat on flooring porter at. Uh, schooling day at Fairy House says in mighty form. So seven to one. Um, great minds think alike. Uh, Ferdinand, seven to one. Big chance uh, for the stairs. On baton, uh, fourteen to one was week eight for the national hunt chase. That was doing the rounds, but uh, didn't seem to materialise. So unlucky with that one. Uh, week nine, Jinto for the Bartlett. Uh, unfortunately, I think you've got that one wrong. Um, I don't think thing. I don't think he has. Uh, Gordon was uh, it was back to like uh, you mentioned the Albert Bartlett for Ginto again. He's one of those ones where he's looking at the ground, Gordon. So I wouldn't, wouldn't I wouldn't uh, rip up the ticket yet. Just he probably oh, still. Hmm. Go on. Yeah, that's that's interesting because if you were to ask me after an ace, where would Ginto go? I would have said straight away to Bartlett. But obviously, Manella Cooner, uh, sorry, Crooner came out. Uh, and and it was all the talk, I suppose, after the Dublin Racing Festival. Uh, but for me, if Jinto was mine, I'd only be running him in one race, race, Roland, and that would be the Bartlett. But I thought the vibes were barely more initially. Initially, yeah, I would say it's more tipping 50 50 now. Uh, yeah, maybe slightly, a slight edge towards the Bally more, but the Alba Bartlett, I wouldn't rip up the ticket just yet. It's not dead. I'm, I'm one that certainly isn't dead, and. I'm, I'm creaming myself looking at this. Pied Piper, 14 to 1 for the Triumph Hurdle. Ronald Groom, by God, that's some bet. It's a good bet. I would say I would say Facil Vega and Blue Butt Lord are a better bet than that. But Triumph Hurdle still looks think so. I think so, yeah. I know, I, I'd say Pied Piper now, 14 to 1. That's good. It's a bet. cracking bet. 14 is a cracking bet, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 I think he, to be honest, I, I think he could be hard bet. I know I like Porticello. I think Pied Piper could be very hard to beat in the triumph. Uh, the nice guy, sixteen to one, named after your good self, Golden Groom. The nice guy, he's, he's, follow, he's following you in, isn't he? He's watching the show. He's following you in. Follow me in sixteen to one. Big chance. Um, well, a good chance. I wouldn't say a big, big chance, but he's he's a good chance in the Albert Bart on each way. Um, appreciated five to one for the champion hurdle. He's following well, me he, in again, Golden Groom. He really is following you. Yeah, he knows. He, he knows. He knows where his bread is buttered, Ferdinand. Uh, five to one. Um, and Danny, monster up and down the gallops, this appreciated. Hasn't been seen in a year, but I, I firmly believe he'll give her a big, big race. And you spoke to Tony as well, um, who said the same, Roland. Uh, Queensbrook for the Mayor's Hurdle. She's interesting. In, yeah, in I a, like her. She's very interesting. That, again, is a very good bet. Congratulations. I think this has a, you know, is will she be a single-figure price on the day, Roland? She, 
She's nine to one now, and I'm. I was. I've. I've already got heaven help us in the mares, but I'm tempted to put her in this week. Uh, nine to one. I thought her run in a punch time was huge behind. Um, uh, behind burning victory, I thought that was a huge one. So uh, she said she goes Gordon more or less. He was lucky. He had her in a, the Carl Cup as well, but he more or less confirmed on Monday she goes to the mares. So uh, yeah, nine to one was interesting. Is that a clue in itself, Ronan? Obviously, he won the race last year, and you know. He's obviously... Yeah, he just thinks the race is open. It's and it is. The mayor's is open. It's not a. It's not a vintage renewal uh, at all. And uh, yeah, she has her chance definitely. Il Rodoto, twenty to one for the Grand Annual. I don't know. Does he go? He was certainly one that he disappointed. Um, was it on a second run of the season? This season, Il Rodoto. Um, no, it wouldn't be for me anyway. Team captain, three to one, Sir Gerhard for the Ballymore. I'd say you're getting a bit nervous today now, Mister Ferdinand, because all the all the exchange money is. Does that really make a difference, Ron? Like, how, what, how do you read the exchanges at this point in time? Um, there's been a big sway in terms of, you know, Supreme Novice. He, he's gone shorter, than we're saying today, for the Supreme Novice on, on the exchange as opposed to the Ballymore. Um, thoughts? Yeah, it does make a difference, uh, definitely, because there's just so, so many things coming out. It can, be, it can be bollocks as well. It's like... John Bond John went Bond, on a, yeah. an absolute walk, and then Nicky Henderson is telling you it's all rubbish when he works at Kempton during the week. So, but then again, as you're, have you you found out to your cost, uh, Allegory de Bassi is more or less. You know, you she was a big saying that. <laughs> she you, came back get, in. Are you getting competitive, grown and groom? Are you? I could see you trying no, to. I'm just saying. I just don't. I don't. I'm just throwing away you up. That's all. <laughs> okay, an urge you mean this man know this man he he, he knows how to do it. He's, like, he's just a very doyle fanboy. Yeah, but look, he's his second wild card is Eddie May, uh, six to one for the Bears Chase. So um, no, he's, he's obviously keeping a close eye to yourself as well. And that looks a good bet. So um going through these, he's 33 to 1 outsider um for the arc, a long shot uh Saint Sam, who I uh, give it each way a chance if he went for got got glory. Um for the triumph hurdle, um, that hasn't run yet. Um, I believe it was in the it's been um Gallop and the Sham Silks. Remind me the, the connections, Ronald Groom. Got glory. Uh, that's uh, uh Turley, Audrey Turley. Turley, that's the one, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, that's not gonna run. It's a uh, Nina Nina the Terrier at uh, 25 to 1 for the Mayor's Navis, um, and Ida's by 40 to 1 for the Barta. But all in all. That looks a very exciting portfolio, Ferdinand. So, uh, congratulations. He's, he's, he's got three absolute corkers, hasn't he? So, uh, he'd, he'd be un, he'd be unlucky if he doesn't come out at least even. I'd say. Oh no, he's 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 definitely going to make profit, uh, Ferdinand. So, congratulations on that. And it's that time of the week, Golden Groom. It's that time of the week, and you don't want to go through your selections again. Is that what you're telling me? I go through them, but I feel like we do this every week. And uh... oh, go go on then. Just give it to us. It's coming here, Chelan. We're getting excited. Talk, talk to us. A lot has changed. Lots has changed. Okay. So, do you want me to go first? Oh, I go first. I'm mad to go first. Uh, Mighty go Potter, first. Mighty Potter for the Supreme Week One, twenty-five to one. Happy Magic Days. Jeez, she looked well in her little spa, didn't she? At home, um, and could be a lively outsider. Ronald Grew. I'm not giving up on Magic Days. We, um, we've kind of gone over this a million times, as you've pointed out. But um, this, this I think is alive again in an open Arkle uh, Magic Days. Sporting John. With uh, I didn't read anything as he confirmed to go for the stairs, but with Sarah de Burley getting Rob James up, um, would it be an indication that uh, Sporting John will go for the stairs? What's your thoughts? I don't know. I don't know. don't know. I think he'll, he I think he'll get. I think he'll get beaten wherever he goes. Okay, well, I, I disagree. I think he's a talented horse. Uh, Capitano for the National Hunt Chase. Um, twenty to one. Yeah, no, that's gone. He's not entered. Okay, tell me something, girls. Six to one for the mayors. Happy with that. Porticello. I don't know. He has it all to do, doesn't he? Fourteen to one. Algori Devasi. As we said, lots has changed, and she unfortunately will miss the festival. So. I've been hit hard, Ronan Groom. I've been the first to be hit by a, a setback. Uh, but I hope she's okay, and I think she's a, back in there going forward. Um, hopefully she gets back uh, sound. Uh, Blue Lord, 7-1 to one for the Arkle. 
Uh, they're coming at him from all angles, but I think he's the one to be with. Seven to one, good value. Buddy Rich, um, that's a corker, I believe. Uh, in one of those words, twenty to one, all the way down to is he five to one, six to one in places. Uh, appreciated, it's eight to one, uh, all the way down to seven to two now. Uh, so big chance in Seagal. 14 to 1, yeah, he's probably still back around 12s, uh, big chance. The nice guy, 14 to 1, uh, happy with that. Uh, Korak Rambler, 16 to 1, again, um, has a good chance in the Ultima. Uh, 140, uh, may have done himself a favour, I think, in the Reynolds town. Um, didn't take, uh, you know, unseated and uh, still traveling okay in the race when he chelt them will suit better, I believe. Uh, a Plutar then was last week, a very conservative pick, Ronan Groom, uh, at three to one. Team captain, an Urgemine, sorry, 10 to three, an Urgemine, five to one for the champion chase. Um, he's the team captain, so treble the score if he lands. And it'll be 15 points. If an Urgemine could just do that, if you could just do me one favor and go and win the champion chase, I'd have 15 points on the board, Ronan Groom, and uh, only. Only another 11 points to, to come clear. Uh, 26 is the total staking uh, system. Stop your smirking. Uh, Florine Porter, stairs hurdle 7-1. to one. And Gallop in the Champs, Run and Groom. I took the, the competition by the balls, put them up for the Turners, 4-1. to one, And it looks like we're, 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 we're on course. Um, it looks like we're on course. Please, Willie, stick to your word and go to the Turners, 4-1. to one. Beats the Bob, in my view. Um, this horse is a, a weapon. Um, although I would be, I wouldn't be if he was running in the RSA and Willie took had a change of heart. I would be against him uh, in that race this season. Uh, Janadil fifty to one outsider. Jerry Kalam uh, twenty five to one outsider. Both of those gone. The real whacker. The real whacker sixty six to one. <laughs> That's a chance. That's a lead to a chance. Um, for Harry Skelton, I'd imagine would ride him and um, rode him last days. He's a, this horse stays well, so race could suit. Ronald Groom, quickly, 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 talk to us. Annie May for the mayor's chase. Uh, I think she'll go off favourite uh, back to the 92. Statuaire is a bit of a dud. Uh, she's 20 to 1 now for the mayor's novice. Riviere de Tell, I think she could go off close to favourite for the Arkel uh, 12 to 1. Give me some enthusiasm. It's a nice price there. Um, St. Felician uh, got a mark of 149 um, I backed him in the any race market I think if they have to go to any race now they'll have to go to the Coral Cup see how that plays out he's a 10 to 1 shot there Galvin 6 to 1 for the Gold Cup rock solid Gordon was absolutely he was he made a really good case for him he really fancies him Gordon he said he'll outstay at Plutard again was the words that came out of his mouth uh, Run Wild Fred again Gordon very very solid he said he thinks he's an absolutely ideal type for the race. He just thinks everything is set up for him for a huge run. So, Run Wild Fred, 5-1 to one for the National Hunt Chase. Night Salute, we discussed him at the top of the show. Uh, Hillcrest, I uh, backed him for the wrong bloody race to put him up for the Ballymore. So, uh, it looks like he's going out of if he's going anywhere. Ahoy Senor is, uh, was 12-1 to one for the Festival Novices Chase. I think they've come to their senses now. They're going to going to run him. I think he's every chance to turn on the form with Brave Man's game. Tiger Roll, 6-1, to one, cross country. He's 2-1 to one best price now. And Gordon, again, very uh, positive about his uh, chances um, on the stable tour or in, in this press morning there on Monday. Uh, Eric Bloodax, uh, yeah, disappointed the last day. We'll have to see with him. Manella Crooner in the same race. Uh, a 6-1 to one shot, I think, is decent. Price. I think he, uh, he'll he be hitting the line pretty hard at Cheltenham. Tommy's Oscar without Honey Suckle. Uh, what happened to you that week, Ronan? That's a disappointing one now, I have to say. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see with that. Uh, oh, Christ above. That's only two That's only bloody two weeks ago, what was I thinking? Uh, the tide turns then. I put up at 11 to 2. Uh, that's Tommy Apologies if you backed him. Yeah. Uh, and Alaho is my captain. I think uh, we both have ba both our team captains are. Uh, we put them up at seven to two. Only mine's uh, obviously a lot more rock solid than yours. So sorry, mine was five point. to one, Ronan. Yours is five to one, yeah. But my seven to two shots going to be odds on, and your five to one shots going to be about four to one on the day. So uh, you're sounding very, very confident, Ronan Groom. You're sounding confident. Uh, can I? Can what? I just finish? Can I just finish, please? Can I just finish? Phil Thor, I've for the Triumph Hurdle. 
Uh, seven to one. I think he's got good chance uh, turning the form with Vauban on a more galloping track. Heaven help us, thirty trees for the mares. Uh, I would have preferred if she was if she was campaigned a bit more uh, uh, smartly, should I say? But I think she has a chance. Darby Star disappointing last weekend for the stairs, so we we we'll have to see with him. And Basil, you have to admit now with Allegory Devasi gone, it's advantage. It's advantage to to myself in this. So tell it. So tell the truth. Are you launching the nuclear war? <laughs> are you putting in a few long range efforts to really? Since the handicap weights have come out, you said you've been holding a few. Is this the time where Rona Groom decides to? Does he smell blood? Long range effort has to be twenty fives or above. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Are holding fire? Are you gonna? Are you gonna go in? I'm thinking of playing. I'm thinking of playing. Uh, no, I don't have a big enough price. I don't have a big enough price. I those. I will have. I will have. How many, have you, how many have you left? You've you've you two left. Have you? Two left. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Your selection this week, please. Actually, uh, here's an interesting one. So, if you're that confident, what price do you give Barry Doyle beating you? <laughs> and what's the and what's the far? I think. I think if they're. I don't they like were, Chinese if, food, right? I think if they were if they were uh, pricing up now, I'd be a four to nine shot, and you'd be about thirteen to eight. I don't know about that. We'll see. Mighty Potter goes in, and it's game over. <laughs> Gordon gave him a good shout. In fairness, he did. He okay. said, yeah. Right, everyone, price it up below. Who is favoured? Because there was someone. Was it? Was it? Um, was it Mr. Mount in the comments said that if it was a race that Ronan would 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 just about get up by two lengths? So price it up below. What what is the book? Let us know below in the comments. And Ronan, whoever gets the closest in myself and yourself size, right, will get sent out another magazine, right? So price it up. Who wins? The groomer to dial. Who's what? What is the prices? So what what way do you price it right now? And if you give me a, a good enough price. We might even arrange back in it. So talk to us. Your selection this week, Ronan. Uh, I'm gonna play a wild card on a selection this week. Have you a wild card left? <laughs> wow. I have a wild card, yeah. Go for it. Okay, so I'll do my normal selection first. I'm gonna put in Commodore. Uh it was one of my three handicap horses there. I'm in twenty twenty to one for the Kim Muir. I think that's where they'll go. He's a course and distance winner. He's winner over the tree too there. I backed on myself today at twenties, uh, so that's where I'm going with him. I made the case for him earlier in the show, and my wild card, um, Paddy Power and Betfair put their heads above the parapet today. Uh, just as a disclaimer, I have backed Gallop and the Champ, uh, for the Turners, but not in this competition. And I was just thinking about it today. I was looking at the race again, and I said, if you're having a bet now, I do think this Laham Press is just a little bit overrated or underrated, even. And Paddy Power and Betfair made him a 92 shot. I think that's worth taking. I think he's only that sort of price because he's a British horse, but I think his form is more compelling. Well, arguably as compelling as the two Irish novices. He's strength from strength this season. The horse he beat the last day, Phil Dorr, just won that grade two at Kempton on Saturday. He's a course and distance winner himself, Lahan Press. Well, he's a course winner. He went over a bit further. He jumps really well. Venetia Williams and Charlie Deitch having a great season. 92, I think, is big. And I'm going to use my wild card to boost that and uh, take on the two Irish novices for the purposes of this competition. So Lahan Press will be my uh, second wild card. Update, ladies and gentlemen, in the last fi- in the- update, ladies and gentlemen, in the last fifty seconds, Ronald Groom has gone from four to nine out to ten to eleven. Uh, <laughs> my selection this week, I've actually already mentioned them. Uh, I have already mentioned them, and um, I'm just trying to find the the header. My selection is adamantly chosen in the Martin Pipe. Again, I've been a a stickler for the rules on the groom. I did see 12s available, but um, over the last 12 hours, there's only, he's only available 12s at one bookmaker. So 10 to 1, adamantly chosen. Um, I like to put a horse in in the Martin Pipe because, you know, it is the last race and it could come down to it, Rona Groom. And adamantly chosen, very similar profile to Gallop and Deschamps, who I put up on this show 
this time last year, and he went and and, and done done me a favor. Um, so, yeah, adamantly chosen for the Martin Pipe made a case earlier, uh, ten to one. Um, it's another Mullen selection. Um, but look, tr- look, he's he's. As we said earlier, he's you know five year old coming here. He's he's quite unexposed still, albeit you know the this was the, the mark or the the, the rating of one hundred and forty two, um the exact same mark as Gallop and the Champ one off last year. So a very similar profile, um hasn't ran in graded company or anything like that, which I suppose is is a bit is is something that maybe differentiates himself and Gallop and the Champ uh, this time last year. Mighty impressive a turtle of seventeen lengths, uh, has formed tied in with uh, some nice horses like Gringo de Bell and uh Ebisari. um and i think he's a horse going in the right direction so adamantly chosen for me rona groom in the martin pipe and that concludes um episode number 15 um and tomorrow night so this is going to go out tonight and tomorrow night we are recording our cheltenham preview and on the show um just to let the listeners know uh danny mullins brian cooper um, are the special guests, and we have also a special guest that you'll see about tomorrow, who will be on with us live for the show. Um, so very interesting. Who could that be, Rona Groom? You have to tune in to find out. Absolutely. See you next week. See you next Monday. We'll try to get it on time this week, next week. Uh, next Monday, Ronan Groom. Two episodes left. What have you left to play? Let the listeners know. You've played your two wild cards now, is that correct? You've two... I have two long shots. Two long shots, so you're keeping those two missiles. And also, of course, two selections. Selection next week, we will be recording the final episode of the Road to Cheltenham Challenge on the Sunday night, Rona Groom. And then we're facing it, facing her for Ryanair um, at Dublin Airport, of course, on the Monday night. And it's going to be great fun. Um, so that's it. We'll see you next week. It's an argument opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by a romping 10, 12.